uh, all right let me go ahead and open this business object called worker now we have already discussed the uh, the properties of a business object right basically all the fields with which i can go ahead and build my reports uh, okay uh, i think this will take a bit of time to load all right so uh, we understand what is a field right there are a number of workday delivered fields but then we'll also see how we can build our own custom fields or our own calculated fields right at this point in time uh, what i am interested in is this third tab which is basically the data sources now if uh, if i look at my custom report basically uh, one of the three required fields that i have to specify is a data source right now the question is what is a data source we so we understand what is a business object right a business object basically represent all your data in workday so i have a worker business object which represents or allows me to basically create instances of workers so again i have this worker business object which defines all the properties of the worker including hire date date of birth gender first name last name and all the other properties now i create instances of this business object right so every employee that i hire in my system right uh, every contractor or a contingent worker that i hire right uh, is an instance of the worker business object right now my employees could be in different statuses right my employee could be active he could be terminated he could be retiree and so on and so forth right now uh, i am building a report right wherein i need to extract details of all the terminated workers just as an example right so again i have a requirement uh, wherein i have to build a report to basically check the details of all the employees who are terminated right voluntary involuntary for whatever reasons in let's say in the last one month right now i have a workforce of uh, let's say 10000 employees right and uh, so these are basically all these are all instances of the worker business object so i have 10000 active employees as of today right uh, and i have 2000 terminated employees just as an example right so i started probably in uh, 2010 or 15 and since then uh, 2000 employees have been terminated right okay so now my requirement is to just pull the details of employees terminated in the last one month now what is a data source a data source is basically a pre-built filter available on the business object which then allows me to only pull in those records which i need so when i only need terminated workers for example i'll check is there a data source which is available which pulls only the terminated records into my report what is the advantage now the moment i select that appropriate data source on my report for terminated workers the report will only query those 2000 workers right and out of those 2000 workers who are terminated then it will only bring those workers who are terminated in the last one month right so now if you see my scope of query is very much reduced so instead of querying all 12,000 employees in my system and then checking how many of those 12,000 employees are terminated and then checking how many of those terminated employees actually got terminated in last one month, system is only querying those 2,000 actually terminated employees. So my report performance is much faster right so if i go ahead and look at these data sources and these are all workday delivered data sources so i cannot go ahead and create any data source on my on my own 
all right so if i look at the first data source it says all the active and terminated workers now what is a data source a data source basically brings instances of that business object right that is all it does and it puts a filter as to only bring the relevant instances right so if i see here it says accesses the worker as its primary business object which is correct because this data source is on the worker business object itself right and what does this data source do it will return one row for each worker right so one row of data for each instance of the worker that i have in my system but then it says it only includes active and terminated workers so any other worker status inactive retiree or any other status it will not even return in my uh, report query right so my query executes faster my report executes faster it takes less amount of resources to go ahead and execute in terms of time but also in terms of memory and resource space okay similarly if i look at all retirees now again i have to build a report only for retirees right and there could be just one percent of my population could be retiree for that one percent population why should i be querying all the other 99 percent of my population right so i'll only use this data source again every data source it returns instances of the business object right the difference is how many instances would it return so this data source again accesses worker as its primary business object and returns one row for each worker but here it will only include those workers who are retirees right again let's take a few other examples now i am building a report for um for my manager self service right wherein manager can for example view the compensation details of his employees right so which means if i manage 10 employees report should only return those 10 employees to me right now if i just need to read 10 employees again report should not be querying all 100000 of my workers so i have this data source called my direct reports again the data source accesses worker as its primary business object returns one row per worker but then it only includes those workers who are associated with the supervisory org which i manage so this data source basically checks who is executing that report checks if this employee manages any supervisory org and then only returns those employees who are members of those supervisory orgs that 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 person manages so if i am running this report it will check if i manage any supervisory org or not if i do not it will just bring me blank results if i manage one supervisory org or two supervisory org or if i am a manager of 10 supervisory orgs then it will check all the members of those supervisory orgs and give me details of only those supervisory orgs right so my direct reports my direct and indirect reports and then you have all these data sources available right so you get a requirement to build any report the first thing you decide is which data source best suits your requirements in the sense which is the smallest data source which includes all the instances that you want to report on or query on right so you'll go for the smallest instance and not the biggest instance right because that means decreased performance okay when deciding on the data source obviously you go through the report description see which data source fits your bill right but then there is one more aspect that you will check you will check the data source type workday delivers two kinds of data sources one are your standard data sources and the second one are your index data sources now there's no difference in any of these data sources whether standard or index uh, in terms of how you build a report so if you use an index data source or a standard data source when it comes to building a report both are exactly the same right uh, the difference is your index data sources 
they are optimized for performance which means your report output or your report performance would be much better right and when i say much better i mean it could be uh, a given report takes 10 minutes and an indexed report could probably give you the same data in the process of in 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 one minute or maybe less than that right so it makes a huge huge impact on your report performance so the first thing that i'll do i'll check if there is any index data source available which can handle my requirement right uh, but then there are not many index data sources available if you see if i filter on index probably there are only right so if you see there are just three index data sources out of 54 right so I'll start with an index data source i'll see if there is now if i look at this index data source it says accesses worker as its primary business object and returns one row per worker right it includes all active and terminated workers right so instead of the data source that we had analyzed at the top the name of that data source was all active and terminated workers and that was a standard data source so if i plan to use a data source to report on my active and terminated workers i would much rather build my report on this particular data source because this is an indexed one right though in terms of report output both would give me the exact same output right so i'll see if there is an index data source available which can handle my requirement if there is i would prefer that if there isn't an index data source available then i would go for a normal data source right now for example I have this checkbox selected called optimized per for performance. I mean, I search for all active and terminated workers. It says there's no search data source which is available. However, when I unselect this and then search for it. right i'm getting this data source right because i had selected that i want to build a report which is optimized for performance workday was not allowing me to select any data source which was non-indexed right so it gives me an error or uh, an alert saying using non-indexed data sources right may lead to slower performance consider using optimized for performance mode so when i've selected optimized for performance i would only be able to use uh, index data source and then there's no other difference okay uh, let me go ahead and build a report right so i'm calling it wb uh, 13.2 20 uh, employee details right uh, we'll talk about what is this enabled as a web service later okay so i've selected my report type i've selected or entered my report time i have selected my data source now based on the data source i have selected workday defaults the business object right because this data source all active and terminated workers it is available on the worker business object right now i can still change my data source but now i can only select those data sources which are available on my primary business object right so i realize that no i should be building my report not on worker probably on a different business object now i'll not be able to change my business object right so i'll have to delete this report create a new report right so i can change a data source but then all these data sources are part of the worker business object itself right okay so now uh, once that is done uh, the next task is to go ahead and sorry guys uh, excuse me the 
excuse me all right so the next task is just go ahead and uh, include the fields that i want to include now workday has different field types and we'll talk about them for example uh, last name right now when i search for a field system shows me an icon besides that field which allows me to identify the field type now this icon called t it means this is a simple text field right so if i go to the details it says this is a field of type text right okay so on the other hand and if I go to the additional actions, it also gives me additional details. So this is the last name of uh, the person. Okay. Uh, instead, if I search for worker, right now the icons that it shows me are completely different, right? For example, it shows me some barbell kind of icon, and then this is uh, a ring kind of icon. Right now, if I click on here, right, it is a self referencing instance. Now, first, let me see here, show here. Now, this icon, right, a dumbbell kind of icon, right, it identifies that this is an instance field, right? Now, what is an instance? An instance is basically what we have already discussed. So, Logan McNeil is an instance of the worker business object. Now, what is the advantage of using an instance? I can go ahead and perform additional actions on it. I can pull additional data from that instance, right? Let me show you an example. So I'll include last name, right? I'll include first name, Right, so both of these are simple text fields, right? So if I go in here again, this is a field of type text, right? And then I am also including worker. Now, uh, what I'll do is now when I search for worker, you see that I get two worker records, right? Or two worker fields. The first one is a workday delivered field, right? It's a single instance, but then it is available on a business object called project resource and the description says it is a worker on the project resource, right? Now, I don't know what project resource is. So let's see what does this second field say. Now, this field is actually available on the worker business object itself. The description says it identifies the worker and en enables you to view and access related details and actions on the worker, right? The field description says, or the field type says, it's a self-referencing instance, sorry. Now this is an instance, or this is basically a field which identifies the business object itself, right? So I have a worker business object, and I have a field within that business object which identifies the worker itself that I'm referring to, right? So this is also an instance, but then it is a self-referencing instance, right? An instance which refers back to the business object itself. Again, we don't have to worry. There's no difference. The only reason I'm using this field is because this field identifies uh, the worker, right? It is available on the worker business object. On the other hand, this field, is available or it gives me the worker who is available on some project resource now i don't know what that project resource is so i'll go ahead and select this field right i'll go ahead and click ok now there are two ways to run a report i can either run it in test mode wherein it only pulls the first 10 or 11 records so i want to quickly test something it is much more easier to run it in test mode, right? So let's say there are 10,000 records and every time you make a change and you run it in full mode, it will probably take you five minutes to execute that report, right? So you want to quickly test something, go ahead and click or run it in test mode. So if you see, it has delivered for me uh, uh, the first 12 records, right? Even though there are many employees in the system. 
Okay, now if you see, uh, because these are text fields, I cannot drill down, right? I cannot, uh, these are my simple text fields. So I cannot go ahead and click on them. They are not hyperlinks. I cannot get additional details. Now, because this is an instance field, I can directly click on it and it launches and shows me the details of the worker. Right, so an instance field is basically it refers to the instance of that particular business object, right? In terms of details, if you see both of them are giving me exact same data, right? So both of them, I'm still getting the same information whether I use this field or these two fields or I may also concatenate both these fields and we'll talk about how that is done and it will basically give me uh, all my data in a single column the way this field does right okay so uh, a difference between a normal static field and an instance field okay let me go ahead and expand this report so I'll come to the business uh, report and edit it right let me go ahead and remove these two fields not required just wanted to show you so i want to add a new field i'll click on this plus icon i want to remove a field i would uh, click on this minus icon i want to uh, reorder my fields click on these icons to move up and down right okay i want to uh, show let's say uh, the manager or the immediate manager of the employee right there is this field again field of type instance which identifies the immediate manager of the workers primary position right okay I want to identify let's say date of birth of the worker right now here You'll, fee, you'll see that the icon is different. Now this icon basically identifies that the field is of type date, right? So again, a work day delivered field, the description says it gives you the birth date of the worker, right? So I'm going to select this field. Okay, I also want to identify, let's say, uh, the length of service of the worker in terms of years. Okay, uh, length of service uh, in years, including partial years. Uh, okay, let's go to this field. Now this icon over here identifies that this is a field of type numeric, right? So your age, your length of service, uh, what else? Your uh, compensation, these are all numeric fields, right? Again, what does the field say? Uh, the field says that it identifies the length of the surface service of the worker including partial years represented in terms of two decimals right so it will show me 5.2 years right uh, there is another field which says it only gives me so is there another field length of service in years rounded up okay this is a calculated field don't worry about it okay no worries i'll select this field so we have looked at an instance field and these are instances this is a date date field type this is a field of type numeric we have also seen a field of type text right let me quickly run this report okay so this gives me date of birth it gives me the length of service of the employee including up to two decimal places right as the report mentioned now because now I'm running this report in full mode and not test mode it basically gives me details of all the employees in the system so give me
Okay, let's go ahead and uh, further enhance this report. So I'll add one more field and then we'll build some modifications on top of that. So I've added a date of birth. Let me add uh, age of the employee as well. So again, age is a numeric field, right? So workers age, work day delivered, field of type numeric. Right. All right, and it gives me uh, the age of the employee, right? Okay, now uh, I have a requirement, right? I have the date of birth of the employee. Uh, okay, not age. So I have the age of the employee, a workday delivered field. I have uh, the date of birth of the employee. Let me also add the higher date of the worker. Right? Again, pretty standard workday delivered field of type date. All right, so all these employees basically uh, 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 created when the system was created in GMS. So they're all hired effective 2000, right? I can probably sort them in ascending order. Right, uh, okay, so they're all hired from 2000. Sort in ascending order, which is strange. Why is it okay? Sorry, sort in descending order. So 2020. Uh, so their length of service is only 0 0.03 and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, now I have a requirement. Now why is age empty for these workers? Because uh, their personal information has not been entered, right? Now I want to basically only pull the pull those workers. Uh, whose age or date of birth is specified, right? So all these workers who do not have their age or date of birth, I do not want to show those workers on my report output, right? Now, based on the data source I have selected, it is basically giving me all active and terminated workers, right? But then on that existing filter, based on the data source, I now want to design my own custom filters saying out of all these active and terminated workers, give me only those employees whose date of birth is not missing, right? Or who have a date of birth value specified. I'll go back to my report. Right, let me go ahead and edit this. I'll go to my filter and here I'll go ahead and add my custom filters, right? So what is my requirement? I only want those workers who have a date of birth value, right? So I'll go in here, I'll select date of birth. Now this, if you see, is again exactly the same logic as to how we build our uh, compensation eligibility rules, right? Or our business process condition rules. So I said date of birth and in the operator, I'll say is not blank, right? So pull me only those workers whose date of birth is not blank or not empty, right? Now let me go ahead and run this report. Now, if you see out of 880 workers, it only gives me those workers uh, whose it only gives me data for 489 workers, right? Let's sort this in ascending order. 
to see if there is any employee whose date of birth is missing and there's basically no employee with blank date of birth right okay now uh, i have another requirement uh, basically i have the age of the employees i have uh, their hire date i have the date of birth right i basically want to know and just a hypothetical example uh, i want to check the age of the employees when they join my organization right so at what age are my employees joining my organization right now how can i pull this data i can basically pull this data by subtracting the date of birth of the employees from the hire date right so if i subtract their date of birth from hire date it will basically give me the age at which they joined my organization right now this is not a workday delivered field which is available right in this case i can go ahead and build my own calculated fields right and how do i do that uh, the task for doing that is create calculated field right so with calculated field you're basically enhancing the workday's delivered business object and adding your own custom fields to define some additional properties of employees or instances in that object right so whenever i build a calculated field i'll basically be doing that on a business object right so i'm selecting worker right i would give a name to my business object or sorry to my calculated field but before that i'll specify the function now what is that i want to do i want to basically subtract two different dates right or subtract one date from another right so for that let me just search with date and we'll talk about a lot of functions so i basically want to find the difference between two different dates right so as i would select the function called date difference right i'll go ahead and give a name to my field right so most different organizations follow different naming conventions or different patterns of the naming convention that i'm going to mention right so usually most organizations they would start a custom field or a calculated field with cf which identifies that this is a calculated field then the the function so it is date difference right then the business object on which that field is built so here the business object is worker right and then a short description of that field right so i'm saying what is that uh, difference so i basically want age of employee during hire or at hire right so again uh, cf identifies that this is a calculated field uh, this is the function i'm using the second part then the business object on which that calculate is built and then a short description what is the advantage uh, just looking at the field name i know at a high level what that field does right so i'll click on okay right now okay, okay. so basically i uh, date difference it determines the whole number of years months or difference between two dates or times right so what is my end date it is basically higher date right from higher date i want to subtract date of birth right and i can show the difference between these two dates in terms of years or months or days right so i'll select in which parameter do i want to find the difference between these two dates right then it says it only gives you the whole number of years so if difference 
if my age was 20 years and 10 months it will basically give me 20 years right so it doesn't give you those fractions as the difference between two different dates right or if my age is uh, if my age was if I want to show that age in terms of months it will again go show me whole months right so uh, it will show 200 months for example right and not 200 months and 15 days just a hypothetical example so I want to find the difference between these two dates in terms of years right so build my calculated field let me copy this and go ahead and edit my report so custom report edit okay let me add it here Right, so this is my calculated field and now when I go ahead and run this report it basically shows me uh, the difference in terms of years so from 1970 to 2000 it is some 29 years and few months right again from 1959 to 2000 it is some 40 years and few months right so it is rounding to the nearest whole number right uh, okay again the age of the employee uh, his date of birth is 90 higher date is 2019 so uh, it is 119 years right Okay, uh, this definition or the name of the column of, over here, it makes perfect sense for a technical resource who wants to understand what that calculated field does. But for an end user who's running this report, he would get absolutely no clue uh, based on what this column title says, right? So instead of showing this default column title or this technical name, let me go ahead and overwrite the report name or uh, the column label right uh, so if i go to my report once again so here i can override the column heading right so here i am saying so just to keep track of how many calculated fields we have worked i'll just mention it as date difference right and let me go ahead and do okay and run once again right now uh, it says date difference right obviously if this is a live report then I'll give uh, a, a meaningful name right all right, so that was uh, the first calculated field function called date difference, right? We'll go ahead and explore uh, other date related functions as well. Excuse me. All right. Uh, if I search for date, let's see what other functions are available. Uh, okay, now uh, let's, so we'll talk about date constant later. It is pretty standard, pretty straightforward. Uh, let's look at build date. Now build date function allows me to go ahead and build my own date from data which is already available in the system. Right. Okay. Let's look at an example. So I'm calling it, building it again on worker business object. Right. So CF uh, build date on worker. Right. And because this, I would just name it 
as 13th Feb. Right? Again, as I mentioned, uh, if you are working for a project, you'll uh, basically give a meaningful description as to what that particular calculated field does. Right? Here I'm just mentioning it as 13th Feb. Uh, and I'll go ahead and do OK. Now, uh, what is this calculated field? Build date, right? Now, the description says it allows you to build a date or time field from the date or time components which are already available in Workday, right? For example, uh, a date includes year, month, and day, right? So I have different options to go ahead and build my year, my month, and my day. So let's say for my year, I want to basically specify a constant value called 2020, right? So here I have specified a specific value for year and I'm calling it 2020, right? For month, I want to extract my month from another date field. So I'll select this checkbox. So let's say my month I want to extract from the higher date of the worker. Right. And my day I want to extract from date of birth of the employee. Right. So let me build this report and then we'll, we'll see how this actually looks in the output. So right. So I'm saying year is 2020 a constant value the month of this date would be extracted from the higher date of the worker and the day would be extracted from the date of birth of the worker right let me go ahead and copy this calculated field and change our report Okay, what I'll do is for now I'll remove all these fields which I don't require. Right? Okay, uh, I'll move this down. Okay, so these two are standard fields. This was my first calculated field. Right? I'll add this calculated field that I've just built and I'm calling it build date again just to keep track of uh, how many functions we have already seen. And I'll go ahead and do OK. Now when I go ahead and run this report. All right. Now let's look at this build date function. Right. So what does this function do or say? So for year everywhere we have specified that the year of the date would be constant of 2020. Right, and that is what I get. So everywhere in my year, uh, it is basically constant value of 2020. Right? Okay. Next, I'm saying extract month from the higher date of the worker. So what is the higher date of the worker? It is Jan 1st, 2000. So here, the month of this date that I have built. It is extracted from the higher date of the worker and the day I have extracted from the date of birth. So what? Okay, so if I look at the date of birth worker of the worker, what is the day? It is 21st, right? Which is what is extracted to go ahead and build my date, right? Again, let's see if I have some other examples here everywhere the employee date, higher date is one one. Okay, let's look at here, right? So again, my year is 2020. My month is extracted from higher date, which is October, which is what comes here. My day is abstract abstracted from date of birth, which is fifth, right? So my date is October 5th, 2020. Right, so I can go ahead and build a date by using a combination of numbers and dates which are already available in the system. 
All right. So building most of these calculated fields very straightforward, right? Uh, when you get a requirement, uh, you uh, the most important thing is you understand which calculated field is used for which purpose. And then once you understand that basic requirement, you see that most of them are very, very straightforward. Okay, let's explore a bit more on the date fields. So the next date field is format date. Now, as the name itself suggests, I can basically use this field to format my date, right? So I want to show this date in terms of uh, year and month and mm and yy or week and year or any of those formats i'll be able to do that okay uh, again my business object is worker and cal field format date on worker bo and again i'm calling it 13 feb Okay, so which date field do I want to format? I now the best part about your reporting framework is that I can go ahead and build nested calculated fields, right? So I have built, for example, this field, which is basically a date that I have built. Now I can take this date field and format the output of this date into using this calculated field function called format date so i can copy this date field and let me go ahead and do that so i'm saying this is my date field which i want to format right and i can format that in terms of let's say year and quarter and year and month and quarter and year and month and day and i have all these standard formats which are available so for example let me select month slash day and do OK and then we'll go ahead and change it once again. I'm copying this, editing my report. And I'm adding this field. Right. So now basically it is exactly the same data, but then I'm formatting it and showing it in a different format using my nested calculated fields, right? So my function that I've used is format date. All right, now if you see what was the format I had selected, I had selected just show me month and day, right? So it shows me month and day, right? Let's go ahead and change this format. Instead of month and day, I want to build my own custom format. So I'll select the option called format mask. The moment I do that, I have to def I have the option to define my own format. I bring my cursor over here. You see that I get a pop up wherein it shows me the options to build my own format. Right. OK, so for example, I small d it identifies the day in a month. So I'm saying small d hyphen uh, m m m which stands for uh, month and then uh, I would add YY which stands for year and then uh, if you see capital D it identifies day in a year so let me add these brackets and show day in a year right okay let's remove year because everywhere your year is constant right so this is my format in which I want to show my date. I'll say OK. The field is already included the moment I run this report the next time. So if I refresh this. Right now system automatically shows me the data in the right format. 
so it is 25th Jan so 25th day of the month and 25th day of the year if I scroll down so these are all Jan employees let's look at an employee from a different month okay so if you look here uh, 24th Feb so 24th of Feb which is basically the 55th day of the year right so 31st 31 days in Jan plus 24 days in Feb which is 55 days so what is the format that I have selected I have selected so if you see here small d it stands for day in a month and capital D stands for day in a year right and I said d hyphen month and then day in a year right so I can go ahead and build my own custom formats so now I am basically showing this data that I have extracted with the help of a build date calculated field function into a specific format by using my format date calculated field function right so if I go ahead and remove this column called build date your end user would not even know that this is basically a, a field that you are pulling with the help of two different nested calculations right okay so uh, the next calculated field that we have looked at is format date okay let's look at uh, what else is there all right again we'll talk about increment or decrement date later let's look at lookup value as of date all right let me go ahead and edit this uh, report once again mm, I'll add a field called manager level one which basically shows me my immediate manager and let me go ahead and do okay let's run this report all right so the manager for Logan McNeil is Steve Morgan right uh, manager for Steve Morgan is also Steve Morgan Oliver Reynolds Steve Morgan and so on and so forth uh, let's look at some of these employees so James Moore uh, manager is Jacqueline right so if I look at James profile his manager is Jacqueline uh, let's go to job details and manager history so this basically shows me all the manager assignments of the employee so Jacqueline is basically his manager from 2008 uh, till uh, today right so from 2008 till today till 2014 he was probably in some position and then uh, from 2015 onwards but in both scenarios the manager is still the same so before 2008 from 2007 till 2008 his manager was Pedro San Diego right now when I'm running this report it is basically giving me the current status of the employee so what is or who is the current manager of Bet Betty Liu or Norma Chen or basically all these 489 workers right but then I want to build or see who was the manager of these employees let's say as of uh, 2007 or any other given date right so I don't want to see the current status of these employees but rather I want to see the manager level one details of these workers as of any given date right and in this case let's take 2007 because that way we'll be able to validate but then as I mentioned this could be any date uh, based on your business requirement so in that case I'll go ahead and build this fun function which says 
look up value of a field as of a given date right again i'll specify the business object as worker right and cf uh, lookup value as of date I'm using the short form called lvd or lookup value space date worker and 13th pen okay now what is the value or value of which field do i want to look up i want to look up the value of manager level one right so manager level one as of a given effective date right now if you see there are two dates one is effective date one is entry date right so i may be performing an action as of today or making a data entry today which would be effective as of any other date right in the past or in the future for example i'm creating a position today effective first of april so the entry date is today but the effective date is first of april right so do i want to pull the value of manager level one as of a given effective date or as of a given entry date right here i'll go ahead and use my date constants right a date constant as the name itself suggests is basically the constant value and for that as well i can go ahead and build a calculated field function right let's see if there is a date constant already available i'm checking first of jan 2007 there's no such date constant available right so i'll go ahead and create a calculated field directly from here so create calculated field and when i search for date i want a date constant so i'll select date constant worker right and all your constant values you basically give it the same name as the value itself so my requirement is to build a constant called first of jan 2007 let's see uh yeah no uh first of jan let's do it first of jan 2008 so i'm calling it 2008 and do okay and here because it is a date constant i'll go ahead and build date constant right assign a date constant to a field and this is all i'm doing now this is another calculated field that i have built of type date constant right now i'll go ahead and do okay let me add this field onto my report again i'm calling it lookup value as of date just so that we can know uh, what all we have already covered let's run this report okay uh so for, let's look at maria right her current manager is hema but as of 2008, it shows the manager was Logan McNeil. So let's open Maria's profile. So I can see that her current manager is Hema Iyer, which is what it shows me. Let's go to her manager history. As of 2008, so from 2000 till 2019, her manager was Logan McNeil. So as of 2008, her manager was Logan McNeil, right? Let's see a few other examples. Uh, Norman Chan, current manager is Betty. Uh, as of 2008, manager was Maria Cardoza, right? Again, let's, uh, so current manager Betty Liu, 
manager history 2008 which is here manager was Maria Cardoza right so it is giving me value of that very field as of that date right uh, I think we were looking for James Moore right let's see what value has been pulled for James Moore let me filter so James Moore right so current manager is Jacqueline and the previous manager as of 2008 is Pedro Santiago right so look up value as of date allows you to go ahead and do reporting on the historical data in workday okay so we have spoken about uh, date difference build date format date date constant lookup value as of date right uh, increment and decrement date a few other calculated field functions we'll talk about later right uh, okay let me stop here uh, uh, let's not rush because there are so many functions which are basically very similar to each other and confusing right so i'll stop here